I was asked to try doing a peek and pop animation in Flinto for Mac. So I took a look at my iPhone in the mail app and I noticed that the first stage of the peak and pop transition is this little bit here where the background blurs out, it scales down, and the active cell is sort of highlighted. And then when you push harder, you go into a preview. So I'm gonna focus on this first stage here just because that, that alone I think is an interesting animation. So I'll try setting that up today and I'll take a look at the other parts of the animation in a future video. So a nice little challenge to see if I can build this in Flinto for Mac as a prototype. This suggestion came from a viewer, so if you have a suggestion for a video you'd like to see, leave it in the comments. So here's my setup for the first portion of a peak pop transition. I've got one screen that looks pretty standard, it kind of mimics the mail app, and it's basically two layers. I've got this uh, cell here and a background group. On the other screen, I've taken that background group and flattened it into a bitmap which allows me to apply a blur to it. Sketch doesn't allow you to apply a blur to a group. And not only have I blurred it, but I shrank it down a little bit. So it's, uh, it's gonna shrink and blur. Then this cell that's in the foreground, I actually scaled that one up just slightly. The other thing I did was to add a shade layer, which is just a black layer with a low opacity on it. I'm gonna use Flinto Sketch plugin, send this to Flinto. And of course, I'm going to create a link off of this cell here. So I'll click Create Link, target the other screen, and I'm going to use Touch Down. We don't have a true 3D touch gesture, but Touch Down should be able to simulate it fairly well. Now I'll create a new transition. And for this tr transition, I'm going to align the screens. So I'll hit the Align Screens checkbox that puts one on top of the other. And you can see sort of this misalignment up here because the blurred version of the screen is slightly smaller than the non-blurred one. So to make this a convincing effect, I'm gonna select the blurred background and scale it up a little bit so that it seems to match the non-blurred version. So you can see I'm scaling this up so that it starts at the original scale and then I'll fade it out so you can't see it. I'm also gonna fade out the shade layer so now the start of the transition looks like the start screen, which is always what you want. And now I'll toggle to the end, and you can see that the blurred layer fades in and it scales down during the animation. Now I'd like the non-blurred uh, layer, that's this one, to scale down along with it, and that will fade out. So we're cross-fading from the blur layer to the non-blurred layer, and we're matching the scale of both of those as we do it. So now we have the scale and the blur happening at the same time, and it's a fairly convincing effect. Last thing I wanna do is account for this one, which is supposed to scale up slightly during the transition. And I think I can just do that by connecting the cell in one screen to the cell on the other screen. So I'm holding Command and clicking the layers in the layer list, and then I'll click Connect Layers. Now both the layers are brought up together, and let's see if the scale works. Yeah, so that cell scales up just slightly, which helps sell the depth effect as you do this 3D touch gesture. Okay, back in the canvas, I'm going to add a backlink on this cell, which you can do by pressing B, and then I'll change the gesture here to touch up. Now let's open the preview, and we'll see if this works. So that's a pretty convincing effect. I think that's very close to the actual gesture, uh, of course, it doesn't use the actual force, but for simulating something like this, that works. And of course, this is just the very first step of that peak gesture. After this part, it should pop up a preview. And so I'll, I'll address that in a future video, but I just wanted to see if I could make this part work and show a tutorial on how I would set that up. Altogether, there's like four separate animations that make up the peak and pop.